I'd like to show how to connect RCT Infini Solar V2 inverter to a Dynes uh, lithium ion battery. In this case, I'm using the BX51100 Dynes battery. Um, it, the connection is exactly the same as uh, a 48100. Um, so the Infini Solar V2 inverter is not equipped with internal BMS communication. So because of that, you do need to buy an um, external box called the Infini Solar BMS box. Um, this will enable the inverter to communicate with the battery. Um, unfortunately, because it's uh, a product that was originally not sold with the unit, you do need to buy this as an extra. Um, one thing to mention, uh, first issue is that the BMS box do not come with a power supply. Um, it do work on 12 volts. Um, so I would recommend to just buy one of these normal um, 12 volt power supplies uh, that can switch between voltages, uh, 3 volts, 5 volts, 9 volts and so forth, um, that you can generally get anywhere. Um, and set it to 12 volts for this BMS box. Um, obviously, do connect the power supply <coughs> to the output of the RCT inverter. Um, so while the inverter has power on output, the BMS box will operate. Um, obviously, if the BMS box uh, lose power you will lose BMS communication as well so it's critical to make sure the BMS box do receive power from the output of the inverter so it's always powered on while uh, the inverter is running so first thing let's connect the power to the BMS box secondly you would have received a grey cable like this, serial uh, communication on the one end and network RJ45 on the other end. Um, this cable is very short, note that I've made it shorter personally. Um, the cable that you will receive is something like 1.2 meters long, um, so do not let the length of the cable fool you. Um, however, make sure you do use this cable that came with the inverter. Um, the cables uh, that you will find online do not have the same pinouts. Um, it do not work with this cable, so make sure you use the end cable that came with the inverter. So this will then go to the serial RS232 side of the BMS box. Okay. Once that is done, you will take the other end, network end, RS232, to the inverters, RS232. Then the cable um, leading to the battery needs to be modified. The cable that came with the BMS box, uh, the pin out is not correct. So you do need to change that. Generally, I prefer to keep the cable uh, on the battery end as a normal networking cable. So you can use any general uh, network cable with the general networking color code side. Um, this you will connect to the battery in. And then on the other end, that needs to go to the BMS box. Um, you will obviously have to change the pin outs by changing the plug. Um, the cables you need to use here is your um, white orange and solid orange. Um, so generally the pin outs for this one is on the battery side, pin number one will go to the BMS box side, pin number four, and then on the battery side, pin number two will go to the BMS box side, pin number five. So on the BMS box, you do have two RS485 ports, 
you can use either one of the two does not matter which one you use okay so it's connected um, now next thing to do is the dip setting before you switch on the battery make sure you do set the dip setting because the dip setting only takes effect while the battery is in off position if you change it while the battery is on um, it does not change its portrait so make sure you do set the setting while it's off um, so second dip is on and the rest is off so number one is off two is on three and four is off now we can switch on the battery okay for this model inverter um, the firmware was updated to U15232 which I'm currently using for BMS communication this version of firmware do work um, the older version uh, firmware might not work um, so if you have anything older um, we do need to update the firmware for this um, note uh, the battery is currently selected to AGM which is not the correct battery type however because we connected the BMS box as soon as communication is established it will change all of the settings as needed so just keep an eye on that as you can see it automatically now changed from AGM to user um, that's basically the BMS that took action over the battery um, the telltale sign that the communication is up and running is have a look at your battery icon note your battery capacity bar stays solid stays on and is not running while the outside line um, of the battery is flashing uh, the battery icon outside line flashing that is your telltale sign that the communication is up and running if the battery is charging then obviously your battery capacity bars will run up and down or from down to up while as it's busy, busy charging um, but the outside line flashing as it's doing now that is your BMS communication that's up and running and that is it we've established BMS communication um, even though this is a 51 100 battery with higher voltage the BMS uh, box um, has already set the inverters parameters correctly to accommodate the 51 uh, volts battery um, we're good to go thank you very much